today, I took a brown snake to the vet. We took the x-rays and then bang, it come up on the screen and we were just like, what is that? I have to go through his airway to get it. But how the heck it got in there, I don't know. Alrighty guys, welcome back to Venom Dose. Today is a wild one, all right? First up, I'm in the middle of milking brown snakes, but I took a brown snake to the vet the other day because when I was milking them last, I noticed one of them actually had a lump in his throat. I can move that from here all the way as far as I want. It's a perfect round ball. I was like, what is going on here? And wait till you see the footage and what the vet actually removed from this snake. I've never seen anything like it. That snake was actually wild caught from um, the end of last year and it's either eaten something with this object inside of it or there was a bit of a nice smell on the object and it ate it but like snakes have eaten some random stuff over the years like you know there's a very famous photo of a i think it's a woma python it was, i think it was someone's pet and it got out and ate a set of barbecue tongs all right like crazy stuff this is seriously wild hey you look at me look good this snake was a bit smaller when it come in. Growing nice, nice big male. And this snake's been in the program for about two years now. Oh, nice. It's actually pretty relaxed these days. Pretty, one of the easier brown snakes I've got to work with, to be honest. And really, really pretty orange spots on the belly there. When I took that brown snake to the vet the other day, I had to tube it. That's like another form of restraint we do with, with snakes sometimes. Um, Cause we had to just give it a uh, light sedation. Um, and I was trying to limit its stress and I didn't really want to pin where this thing was. So this is the exact tube I used for that brown snake. All right, so it's really safe for me. All I do is I literally sit it like that and I put the snake on the ground and they go into them and once it's got its head about a foot in I just quickly grab that and then its head's there we we're able to x-ray it which you'll see in the footage and I can restrain it nice and safely like that um, but yeah they, they're called a, a snake tube all right and they've got different sizes for obviously the different size snakes alrighty so we are now going to cut to that footage from the other day up at the vet just you wait and see what unfolds. All right, so we've just run up to some of the vets with this Eastern Brown. I told you guys he had a lump in his throat when I was milking him. So I was a bit suspicious of what it could be. Um, I definitely haven't had anything like this in his enclosure. So we knocked him down a little bit, especially under the light sedation. We've just taken an X-ray and Robin thinks it's probably metal. We're gonna now try and remove it without um, invasive surgery, so she's hopefully it's going to get in my throat, get out with some forceps and pull it out, and we'll hopefully see what is in this brown snake. This is a magnet. We're going to see if we can grab it with a magnet and pull it back out. I wouldn't normally restrain a snake like this, especially a highly venomous snake coming out of the tube, but it's not heavily sedated, so I've got to bite the back of the head now. Now, got the jaws, and... See if you can push that up like you were doing yesterday. So if we can just do this so that somebody's holding it open, I could feel something rough. What if you nicked him through the scales here and just... Yeah, cut it out. Yeah. I could do that. But you keep it right where it is. Yeah. And we'll keep that there. So we're going to have to um, do a little incision between the scales here and try and slide it out because we're worried it's going to damage his esophagus, getting it out where it is. And it's also putting a lot of pressure on his esophagus. Don't get me. That's the trachea. Yeah. I can't see how it would get into there. That's it though, it's not coming through his stoma. Yeah. So I have to go through his airway to get it. But how the heck it got in there, I don't know. Well, so you reckon we're gonna have to push it out of the trachea? Yeah, because uh, unless it's on the back side of the trachea, which it can't possibly be in the trachea. I still think it's in the esophagus. I just need a better light. What happens if you cut the trachea? Well, then I have to sew it back up again. It doesn't seem like it's in there. All right, well, we're going to have to do a tracheostomy on a snake. So it's in the actual trachea, which is mind-blowing. It's a sinker. It is a sinker. It's exactly what it is. Maybe you swallowed a fish with it in it. It even smells like fish. I don't even know how this guy's breathing. 
There you go. Now I'm going to close that back up again. A sinker. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have to stitch that? Yep. Oops, we lost our sinker. I think this is a new record for how long I've restrained a snake. Your hand cramping yet? It's like past, it's like dead. It's one of the wildest things I've seen. I had a crocodile up north that regurged part of a crab pot, some fishing gear like this, and a can of Coke. He was actually called off a golf course at Port Douglas. He tried to eat this fella from Melbourne, and um, yeah, they told him, and it was shocking. And that was cool seeing that. But this is really unique because it's in this trachea, which is, all right, he's seen the size of the sinker. Robin thinks he's having it in his guts when he's eating something when he was in the wild, and he's tried to regurge and then, you know, breathed in at the same time, and it's probably got stuck, and then a bit of a panning has worked its way into his trachea and got stuck at the top there. But regardless, it is just hectic. And we are very lucky to have Dr. Robin. She is there at phone call. She comes flying in, or get, we come flying up with animals. He's the best in the business, aren't you? I appreciate the glory, but no, I just like what I do. All right, so we are an hour and 15 minutes in, and Robin's just sealing up the last <laughs> rooster. She's tearing up the last bit now. Um, so, and I've just broken my personal record for the longest time I've had restrained a venomous snake for an hour and 15 minutes. So my hand is feeling a bit secondhand, but that's right. Robin's done a fantastic job. So he'll have a bit of a recovery behind him. Probably have a month off, um, like solid food. I'll... We'll, um, go move that rooster. <laughs> we'll syringe him a bit of um, nutrition in maybe a week or two, see how he's going. And then he might have to come back in and have those stitches taken out. But we will keep you updated, all right? But thank you, Robin, for doing this, eh? Hey? All right. And then go skin, and then we're out of here before he decides to jump off the table. That is absolute perfect level of sedation. All right, so operation complete. And this is the sinker. Let's get him in the bag and get it back to the park. How wild was that? A fishing sinker in a brown snake. You wouldn't read about it. But, um, when Dr. Robin cut it open and boop, and it popped out on the floor, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. The snake's making a great recovery. We're gonna have a look. I haven't got him on substrate at the moment because we he's obviously stitched up, so he's just on paper. Um, and we're just monitoring his progress. So far, he's doing great. Um, I'm keeping him down the bottom here, um, nice and quiet. He's recovering fantastic. There he is, hi mister. And so what'll happen in probably another week, I'll take him to the vet for a checkup. And if the wound or the incision is nice and healed, Dr. Robin will remove those stitches and I'll start to offer him a bit of food. And um, yeah, hopefully he, he should make a full recovery. Reptiles are hardy. Like out in the wild, they deal with some pretty hardcore injuries like you know, most of my brown snakes have got scars on them from tackling different prey items and so on. Super, super tough animals. So um, what we think's happened is it's eaten something in the wild and we think it was in its stomach for a long time. So reptiles can hold stuff in their, their stomach for, for very long periods. He's tried to regurge it because it, it, it went out of his stomach, we think, and then He's tried to regurgitate at the same time. He's taken a breath and he sucked it into his trachea and it got stuck there. And that's where it was sort of just going up and down just here. Couldn't get any lower, couldn't quite come out. I, I did try and free it here and I, I, I felt like I, it, it, it wasn't going to work. So thank you, Dr. Robin. She did a fantastic job with that. Anyway, guys, that is going to be it for this episode. Hope you liked that one. Hope you learned something new. Anyway, you know the deal. Uh, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, and I will see you for the next episode.